month. Uh, this is our last panel. Very sorry for the delay, four minutes delay. We were having some technical issues, but everything is good to go now. So uh, sorry about that. Um, so once again, welcome to our uh, last panel of the Newcomer Career Month. Um, and uh, today we're gonna be discussing uh, it will be a, a different approach from the other panels as the other panels we were discussing more about the specific uh, careers in Canada, right? Like uh, engineering, banking, accounting, and so on. But today we are going to be discussing, it will be a, a little bit uh, different, the approach, and I'm going to tell you why in a few um, after we we do the uh, introductions but uh just let you just to let you know that this is an event that's being uh, managed by luther wood uh, employment services uh for those that are not familiar with luther wood luther wood is a not for profit based in the waterloo region and we also have uh, uh, an office in guelph uh, and this is specific office in guelph we uh, have uh, the newcomer career support program where we help newcomers to uh, secure employment or develop their career here in Canada. And this is also um, an event that is supported by and is sponsored by the Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada. I'd like to say a hello to uh, our friend Kono from IRCC that is uh, joining us today to watch this, this panel as well. And um, during the panel, you're going to see on your dashboard, on your GoToWebinar dashboard, that there is, uh, Polly is going to is gonna show you, um, but there is a box where you can write your questions. So in case you have questions, please share with us, okay? Feel free to share with us. And if we, uh, if Polly can answer your questions, she'll do this, she'll do it right away. If, if it's a question that is interesting to be shared with the audience, she's going to share uh, by the end of the presentation, okay? So today we have uh, two guests uh, with uh, very interesting stories to share with us today. Um, I would like to introduce our guests. Our uh, first guest is also a mentor of the uh, mentorship program for international trained professionals, Carla Beckwa. Is that how you pronounce Carla Beckwa? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's a manager at the uh, Canada's Food and Agri Tech Engine. Uh, it's a uh, not for profit based in Guelph, but she can explain more about that in a few. And then we also have Vipu Goyal. Uh, he's associate director and wholesale credit at RBC. And uh, while Carla was is a mentor, uh, Vipu used to be a client. He's a former client and now also a mentor. He has he has registered to be a mentor now, so he's helping people. Like uh, you know, he had also have some support from us and mentors in the past, and he wants to do the same thing now. So welcome to you too. Um, and I want to start with Carla, if you can share a little bit about what you do at the uh, Canada's Food and Agri-Tech Engine, please. Thank you, Carlos. Hello, everybody. I'm Carla Berpois. I am the manager at uh, BioEnterprise Canada's Food and Agri-Tech Engine. As uh, Carlos said, we are in Guelph and we are a national business accelerator for food and agri-tech, uh, for the food and agri-tech industry. For the ones who are not familiar with accelerators, we are a not-for-profit organization funded mostly by the government. We have some private uh, funders and sponsors as well, but we use our funding to help startup companies in food and agri-tech and agriculture technology, and they can start getting mentorship, coaching, funding as well, so they can grow their uh, companies and become uh, larger businesses. So that's what uh, we do here. It is a membership partnership model uh, organization. So we have small startup companies or the ones who are ready to scale up, join us as members, 
and we provide them with services to grow and our partners support us and the companies in their journey as well. Great. Now, Vipo, can you tell uh, us a little bit about your role at RBC? Yeah, sure. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Vipo here. I currently work as an associate director at RBC's wholesale credit risk team. Uh, so you know, everybody knows, you know, RBC is the biggest bank in Canada. So you know, I'm not going to talk about what RBC does, but what specifically my group does. So basically, we deal with the largest um, corporate clients of RBC, you know, globally, be it in the United States, Canada, or even you know, Asia and Europe. So my role is basically to look at you know, credit requests uh, from large corporate clients. You know, like you know, my clients include Canadian Tire. Home Depot, you know, like those kind of big corporates, and so we look at credit requests for the from these clients. You know, we adjudicate, you know, we assess whether we should be, let's say, you know, lending to a particular client or not, and in case we should be, then how much we should be lending at, you know, what is the risk profile of the client, and those kind of things. So basically, my role is to adjudicate um, credit requests and uh, you know approve loans and credit for these big clients. All right, so. Um, as I was explaining to uh, to all of you at the beginning, this is a, a, a little bit different panel because we want to discuss it here something about uh, how how our guests started their career in Canada, all the expectations, the struggles, uh, the happy moments, um, because I I believe this is very important uh, based on some experience that we had in the past with some clients. We know that expectations uh, some people have with expect come to Canada with some expectations. Yes, some people with a very high expectation, some people with a more realistic expectations. And these, of course, will impact us during our uh, job searching, our strategies, and everything, right? Um, the reason, again, the reason why I invited these two today is because Carla has a very interesting story. Uh, Vipo also has a very interesting story. They both have a kind of a different thing, like because Carla took a while to she kind of established her career, and Vipo had like a, I would say a quicker than usual situation to find where he is now, and uh, it's just to demonstrate to to our audience that uh, it there is no uh, formula or there is no script. To, to land or to establish your career in Canada, right? It will depend uh, in so many factors. So I would like to, to start with the Vipo first with a question. Vipo, how long did you take to, 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 um, to establish or to get your first job in your field in Canada? And uh, how, how that happened, if you can share a little bit about this story? Sure. So um, actually, it took me around six months uh, to find the role that I'm currently in. Uh, obviously, I did not start as an associate director. I started as an associate and then got promoted to an associate director. It's an interesting story because, you know, obviously, like most new immigrants, I landed at the Toronto Pearson Airport. And then, you know, I moved to Guelph because uh, I had a friend who stayed in Guelph, so you know I could kind of lodge with him for free for the first few days because you know just trying to save up some money. Anyway, so you know banking, uh, right, uh, you know it's a difficult nut to crack, especially you know if you have a very particular group in mind. So I've always worked with wholesale credit, uh, you know even in the past. So I was always trying to target wholesale credit. Wholesale credit is a relatively smaller group compared to, you know, uh, commercial credit or private, uh, you know, retail banking. So it took me some time, but interestingly, you know, so when I was there I, for the first four months, I had no interviews. I did not hear back from any recruiters. So, you know, I was slightly in the stage when I was doubting, you know, what is going to happen to me and, you know, maybe if I'll probably need to go back to India or something. And then, you know, again, uh, so I had some, I had a plan, you know, wherein I would be more flexible with locations and stuff, you know, as time went on. So after the first few months when I was mostly applying to, you know, jobs in Toronto, I started applying Canada-wide, you know, basically, you know, anywhere. So interestingly, uh, 
by the time I uh, had the RBC job in my hand, I also had a job offer from TD, a very good job offer. And interestingly, both the job offers did not start with an application to a Toronto job. So the RBC job that I got, I had actually applied uh, to a job posting in Calgary at RBC. So maybe, you know, they have less applicants there. So without any reference, the hiring manager kind of looked at my resume. He thought I had a lot of experience and he actually sent my resume to the Toronto team. And since it came from somebody within RBC, they kind of, you know, to, treated it as a referral and they went through my resume and they liked it as well and they invited me to, uh, for an interview. So similarly with TD, I had actually applied to a uh, one year role, uh, temporary role in Saskatoon um, because I wasn't hearing any hearing back from anybody, right? So I had become more flexible with the location. I just wanted to have a good role with a good organization. So I applied to a role in Saskatoon uh, it was a long process. Maybe, you know, I probably went in for like eight interviews. Uh, the people at TD really liked me. You know, I met a lot of people in Toronto because they, obviously I could not meet the Saskatoon team face to face because I was in Toronto. So they made me meet a lot of people in Toronto and the Toronto team actually ended up offering me a role. But the time that came in, uh, I had already accepted the role at RBC and, you know, here I am today. That's interesting because like uh, he took like eight interviews, yeah, the, as you said, and, and they lost a good talent because they took too long, right? Like uh, <laughs> the competition will not be waiting. <laughs> no, I think, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, I think I found TD to be very open to immigrants. Actually, this was uh -huh. not the only process uh, that was working well for me in TD. The thing with TD is, you know, because they were in Saskatoon and, you know, it was a one year role. So probably, you know, they were actually thinking for me in the sense that, you know, they probably thought, you know, it's better to have somebody who is in Toronto to have a role in Toronto rather than, you know, make me move to Saskatoon for one year. And then, you know, you never know if there would be a role after that one year or not. So actually, I think they were pretty nice to me. It's just that, you know, I had accepted an RBC offer by the time that came in. That's great. So Carla, let's uh, let's hear your story a little bit. Uh, when you landed in Canada, you 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 didn't land here in Ontario. You went to Nova Scotia, right? Yeah, that's right. We went to Halifax, and uh, my husband uh, applied for an MBA at St. Mary's University, and we decided to come. And we had a nine-month-old daughter. And our uh, journey was a little bit uh, uh, harder than we expected. I, uh, I am from Brazil originally, and we, we came from Brazil, but I had worked for about 10 years uh, in London, England, and uh, I felt uh, confident that we would come to Canada. I had never been to Canada in my life, and my husband would be able to go to university to take his MBA and I would, you know, get my daughter in a daycare and I could apply for jobs and since I could speak English and I had, you know, an international uh, resume, I thought it would be, you know, not easy, but, you know, relatively easy to apply for jobs. Okay. And so uh, reality hit us uh, pretty uh, bad, I would say, with uh, the surprise that uh, uh, Halifax was a little bit more conservative and there were not many jobs available. And the university, St. Mary's University, told us as international students that we could put our daughter uh, in their daycare. So we are counting on that. And uh, again, uh, reality check when we arrived, yes, there is room, but it takes about 10 months to get uh, a place in daycare and that basically just told me you are stuck you don't have anyone to look after no family you don't have anyone to look after your daughter you cannot get a job the money we had for the MBA was the money for the MBA we are not counting extra expenses so it, it was a little bit of a I guess disappointment in a way but you just have to do what you have to do so I stayed home looking after my daughter and uh, my husband was studying pretty hard. He didn't have much time 
uh, you know, to be home and, and, and support. So I decided to look for jobs and I, in four weeks, I sent 100 resumes and I got one phone call. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, in a way you were kind of, hey, great. At least mm -hmm. I got one, one call, uh, didn't get the job. So, you know, you know, a month went by and you start to get a little anxious. And, and I think that's the comment I would make to anyone nowadays coming to Canada. Uh, don't come here expecting that things are going to work out overnight because they are not. And, and I think that's being realistic. You know, when you move anywhere, you probably need a few months to settle down, especially if you're coming with a family. If you're single, it's different, right? We all have different situations. If you have a little bit more money, it be different. But I think that what was the shock uh, for us, not knowing the place, thinking, you know, I had a job in London, I have reference, I can find a job in Canada, and, and it wasn't exactly like that. So, you know, after a month, I start to get a little bit anxious, and then I thought, you know what, I just need a job to start and in i remember that when i was applying for jobs one person said to me although you have experience you know uh, international in english speaking countries you do not have any canadian reference and they said that will make a difference so if you can get a job and start getting reference it, it will help you. So I went to a employment agency and I signed up and I said, I need a job. I have a 10 months old daughter. I have a husband going through an MBA and we need money to pay the rent. So I said anything. And I remember that I got uh, an offer as a, for two weeks, temp job as a secretary for an architecture firm. And I said, okay, we had some Brazilian community uh, at university. So I accepted the two weeks and all the money I made in those two weeks, I paid for someone to look after my daughter. But I got my first reference. <laughs> <laughs> And, and then, you know, the agency sent me other jobs. So I, I, I actually called my mother and I was fortunate that she could come and look after my daughter because I said, if I have to work and pay, you know, I'm getting the reference, but it's not working. So yeah. I think those are the things that you learn, right? It, it is, if you are, you know, I was fortunate to be able to bring my mom so she could after look after my daughter and then the agency kept me giving different temp jobs and i remember at one point i had three different jobs i was making five dollars an hour <laughs> and it was exhausting but you know i was getting the reference and i think it just gives you the i think it was the goal at the time was i have i need references we need you know to get some money i so i i think it was planning in small chunks mm -hmm. and uh, you know what when when i tell this story nowadays every time i talk about it i, I you know it i i just smile because it was a struggle but it paid off and and then you know you can laugh at those stories now and and they all gave me different types of experience that's awesome so carl let me let me ask you something um have and this question is as i said this is a different conversation that we're having today i i would say that this conversation today is more psychological yeah. than you know more like a motivational piece because yeah. the reason um the, the the reason that this is very important is to first people see that uh you are the the owner of your own path right like uh, you are building your own story here um uh, i know that uh, before I, I i came here i was uh, reading a lot of blogs and things on the internet i don't know if vipo went through that or carla but i was reading and there are some people that they were struggling were 
there are some people that were uh, being successful. And, and, and I always try to count on the, uh, the worst case scenario. Just to give you an idea, when I came here, we sold everything that we had and I was prepared to stay for two years without a job, just, you know, just in case, of course, I didn't want that, but just in case, or if I want, I have to flip burgers, whatever, I'm prepared for that. So I, I'm always prepared for the worst and expect for the best, of course. What was your mindset like uh, when you came here? Because uh, let's talk a little bit about expectations, right? Uh, you had, uh, from my from my understanding, you had a high expectation because you came here with uh, this experience, especially from England, right? Like uh, England and Canada, they are so connected. Expected that okay, it would be easier than uh, on an ordinary person. How this expectation uh, impacted your, you know, like uh, uh, at least the, the beginning or the start of your journey here? How how these impacted negatively or positively? your, your yeah. experience at the beginning yeah it, it, that's a very good question and and it is true it, it's all about the expectation right so yes uh, so I was not as smart as you I didn't check any blogs or anything it was <laughs> it was literally the, the connection to Canada was we knew people who had come who had gone to St. Mary's for an MBA and then they really like Canada and they applied for immigration and, uh, you know, they had great stories to tell. And uh, we thought about it and said, you know what, I, I think it's the right time to do it in our lives. And, you know, we have a, a young daughter, but, you know, I worked, as, as you said, uh, you know, in, uh, in England and other countries, actually. I can speak the language, I can support and you know, we are bringing enough money to pay for the MBA and we had to have a little bit of money, you know, to carry on. We did exactly mm -hmm. the same. We sold everything. We came here with mm -hmm. four suitcases and a baby and we left life behind in, in Brazil. But my expectation was when we applied for the MBA and we got the acceptance, they clearly said that they had support. We would they would help us find a place to stay and we would have daycare. And I said, if we have that system in place, mm -hmm. uh, it will be easier, right? I, again, I was not expecting to get a job, but I would say, I thought in probably a month I can get a job. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, maybe you should, one should not come with that expectation, uh, but, you know, it, it happened to me. And, and the, the impact it had on me was, wow, Canada is a completely different country than my country and then England and then other places I've been, I lived in and I, and I work in. And I think doing a little bit more research and trying to talk to people that you know or reaching out to a community if, if you can find that uh, support system before you come, that makes a huge difference. But then when you get here, as we say, in, in, as we say here, you know, you either give it a time and then you go back if you can, or you just bite the bullet and do what you have to do. And that's what happened to me. <laughs> You're kind of, I, I did think though, I, I, I said to my husband at the time, I said, I'm giving it three more months. And if the situation is still like that, we have to make a decision. You can stay to finish the MBA and I go back, uh, you know, with my parents. I don't know, we, I didn't even know what you said, but we need to set a goal here and, and do that. And, and the decision was, uh, let's make it work. Wow. Right? <laughs> and, and, and then I worked my best, but I actually had to write a letter to the president of St. Mary's University at the time. And I said to him, I am a desperate mother who is here to, you know, provide a better future. And what I was told when we applied is not what we had when we got here. And uh, two days later, I actually got a call from St. Mary's University 
asking me how they could help get my daughter into daycare. And, and, and that was, I was either lucky mm -hmm. or I was completely crazy, <laughs> but I think it was just that determination, right? So, so I think it, it, it will always be different from different people, but I would say expectations should be not very high. Uh, lots of research. If you have, if you know people who are here, and you can come here with the support, with some more real life advice. Uh, it, it is extremely important. It makes a big difference. Vipo, let's talk about uh, your uh, expectations when you first came from India to Canada. How was it? Um, so as you mentioned, Carlos, I had, you know, looked through some blogs and forums and all that. And the general expectation was to not to expect too high because, you know, uh, I think, you know, what happens is if there is some bias in the sense that, you know, once somebody who's successful, maybe, you know, you don't go and log into the forums and blogs and type your experience. But if you ha did not have a good experience, maybe, you know, you have too much time in, on your hands to, you know, type negative comments and negative experiences. So, you know, if you go through the online forums and resources, you tend to find more of negative responses. And that is what I think uh, happens. So I had gone through a lot of that. And so I was uh, really skeptical about, you know, how things would work and, you know, what my career would look like. I, I was really okay, you know, to, downgrade my career by maybe not like one or two notches but maybe five or eight or ten steps down because you know i thought uh, that's how it would work or it should work because you know i am i made the decision or the choice to move to a new country right so there is a price price or cost to pay for that mm -hmm. but then luckily you know it, it played out better than that right and then I see, you know, for example, specifically in my group, which is, you know, again, as I said, it's not the easiest starter group, but it's slightly, you know, more technical and all that. So, but I see, you know, RBC hiring a lot of uh, newcomers, you know, who have relevant experience and all that into the same role that I started with. So, you know, obviously there are uh, things and there are opportunities. It's just that, you know, you need to look at the right place and, you know, you with time and so you need to be flexible you know you may not find the exact thing but you know a lot of the time it's about getting your foot in the door and then you know you can advance so you you're working for um back back in india you, you were working for jp morgan you're working for other banks there um did you have the opportunity to establish a kind of a network from india like before you 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 uh, arrived in Canada, uh, establish a network. So when you, because you were mentioning about a friend that you had here, that was kind of your support at the beginning, right? How, how that uh, helped you like uh, this, uh, to, to have a local network, even, even if it's a friend or how did the networking piece worked for you? Um, so, you know, when I moved in 2018, the virtual meetings were not that big a thing. So honestly, I did not make too much effort to network when I was still in India. When I did land here, I, you know, I would try to connect with people on LinkedIn and try to invite them for coffee chat and all that. But honestly speaking, you know, I'm not much of a natural networker. It was kind of forced networking that I was trying to do because, you know, it, and it is really important, right? If you think about it, both the opportunities that I got or both the offers that I had received at that point in time were kind of because of, you know, somebody internally referred me to somebody else, right? So it's very important to meet people here. And then now because, you know, I am relatively established in my career, I get a lot of requests from um, people who want to immigrate or who have recently landed. And, you know, I generally, you know, talk to them and, you know, if if there is a match between the experience and the role, I try to refer them to roles within RBC and kind of thing. So um, the thing is, I mean, I did not really try to make a lot of effort to network from India. Um, the friend that I had is a friend from India. So, you know, I basically the biggest support that I got from him was that, you know, uh, he was 
kind enough to let me stay with him for you know more than a couple of months without any rent and you know so basically i i did not have to pay a dime for anything you know he was uh, <laughs> he bought the groceries he bought the rent and all that but you know that adds a lot of comfort right because you know as carlo mentioned and you know as carlos you alluded yourself right when you land into a new country the first major concern is to meet your expenses right you want to have enough to provide for your family and you know so you don't want to run out of money to buy food and you know to pay rent right so with those expenses not coming in immediately you know uh, with my friend taking care of those for me that was a very big relief that you know kind of gave me a lot of mental bandwidth to you know only focus on finding jobs right i did not kind of had to focus on finding you know something to sustain myself while also trying to find a full time job i could solely focus on finding a full time job mm-hmm. though nothing work so you know as kala mentioned you know probably uh, i was also applying on a daily basis i would you know that that, that is the only thing i had uh, right to do i had to have anything else to do so i would wake up every day i would uh, you know search job, for for a job <laughs> yeah. yeah it's so for the relevant terms that i you know for, that are relevant to my profile and you know whatever came up on indeed linkedin and you know whatever else i could find on banks websites and all that and i would just keep applying every day so yeah i think that support system on you know not having to take care of some of the expenses initially that was very helpful in you know keeping or giving me the enough giving me enough time and mental bandwidth to you know just focus on what i had to do carla you have uh, you have an interesting story also about the uh, uh networking like i i believe someone uh i think has to do with your first or second job someone that refer you to the job or something like that i don't remember very well but if you can if you can yeah. uh, share with us yeah absolutely uh so we were uh, very fortunate that there was a career uh, fair uh, in, at St. Mary's University and uh, all the MBA students, my husband being one of them, were preparing you know, to attend. And, and uh, there was a company in Calgary uh, that got very interested in my husband's resume and uh, offered him a job. So we were in Halifax for about a year Mm-hmm. And they offered him this job in Calgary, and uh, we were like, "Wow, this is the jackpot!" <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, a great opportunity. Uh, you know, after a year of, you know, we were just kind of getting, you know, settled in Halifax, and uh, he had one year, one more year for his MBA. So long story short. He was able to finish his MBA as a visiting student with the University of Calgary, and he took the job. But then I was kind of, oh my God, here I go again. I have to move to Calgary with now my one-year-old, almost two years old, and uh, a job. So I was working uh, for the Nova Scotia Community College, and I mentioned to uh, a couple of colleagues because I knew I had learned working there that colleges and university have lots of connections throughout you know the country so I just told everybody said my husband got this great opportunity you know moving to Calgary uh, but I really need to get a job do you does anybody know anyone and and someone at the college said you know I actually know a person that maybe you should contact when you get to Calgary. So I resigned from my job. I moved to Calgary with no job. Again, rented a place, settled. And I called that person. He gave the number in a couple of weeks. I I was in uh, in Calgary. I I called that lady and I said, "Uh, this person referred me to you. No, sorry, it was a gentleman. I called him and I said, I got a, this person gave me your contact and so on, and I'm looking for a job. And he said, you know what? I don't have a job, but I think the director next door here to me is looking for somebody. Why don't you contact her? So I called the other <laughs> person and yeah, she, she, she had posted for a job 
and I sent her my resume and uh, she called me back and said, you know what, I think you could be a good fit, so I'd like to invite you for an interview. And I prepared for my interview and I'll never forget it. It was it all happened in November. I moved uh, in maybe October, I can't remember, October, November. I called them the first week I was there. She invited for an interview and it was December 2nd. She called me and she offered me the job to start January 2nd. So I still had a, an extra month to settle, to get my daughter a daycare, you know, and, and have things. So again, speaking of networking, you know, and knowing people, it, it, it does, you know, make a difference that the networking and I, I think prior, you know, your other question as well, I'm just going to add that and, and Vipu may, made that comment too. The expectation is high when we come, especially about our uh, resumes and our experiences. And it is very hard to accept the fact that maybe you have to start your job at $5 an hour, right? And, and some people are very lucky and, and, and they don't go through that, which is fantastic, but we are all different. So I, I think that the mindset that, yes, I'm gonna look for a fit for my uh, skills and qualifications and so on, because I had both experiences. I, you know, I, I, I was looking for jobs and I <laughs> didn't get some of the jobs or interviews because they thought I was overqualified. Mm -hmm. and, and my uh, comment to them was, but doesn't ma matter, you know, I, I, I'm gonna bring the experience, but I'm not expecting the salary or I'm not expect, I, I just want, as people said, a put in the door, you know? And so I think that, that comes with, you know, expectations, networking uh, and accepting that maybe you have to go one or two or three steps back in your career, you know, because once you get hired, you will be seen. I can guarantee you that. This this uh, this comment about the over being overqualified is interesting because we had this discussion on our last uh, panel and uh, I was sharing a story that my brother actually explained to me what is being what's the problem of being overqualified because when I was in Brazil and I could I could see the stories of some people saying that uh, they were applying for jobs like he, he, like yourself and and the, the the manager would say oh you are overqualified and say well but that's a bonus right like uh, you are bringing in someone with uh, more experience than than you need why is that a bad thing and then my brother explained because my brother lives in montreal he's been living here for a while and he said well the problem is when you hire someone that uh, for a role let's say an entry-level job and that person has experience to be a manager it means that that person doesn't want that job that person just wanna that job for a while till you find you know the job that she or he wants for them from the manager's point of view from the manager's perspective this is a waste of time because you're going to be training someone and everything. And then at the end, that person will be gone and you have to hire someone else. And then I said, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I don't blame managers to think that way because it makes sense. You know, when you are uh, uh, and you are a manager, you, you, you know that, Carla. So uh, that's a, that was an interesting um perspective that I, I didn't yeah. think of but uh, so so now let's let's uh, I don't know if Vipo now it's involved with a uh, hiring uh, Vipo are you are you involved in a hiring position anyhow or no do you participate in a in a interviews with other people that uh, you know candidates and things like that at the moment at RBC or no Sometimes, you know, they just bring me in to intimidate the candidate. Uh, the, the, <laughs> just kidding, you know, sometimes they actually, you know, they want an, a fixed number of people at least to be there on the interview panel. So sometimes I do get invited, but, uh, you know, so basically how it works, obviously, it depends on the team. 
So the team that I started with, uh, in that team, somebody with my designation would be a team lead. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they would be involved in, actively involved in hiring and all that. But the team that I'm right now in, um, SSA director is the starting position. Mm-hmm. You know, so I don't get involved with hiring because, you know, it would be like hiring a colleague for myself, right? So uh, I have a question for you to start with uh, Vipo now. Uh, well, I know that uh, I'm asking because I know that uh, Carla has his experience. She's a manager for, for years, not only now, but before also for Unitron. Uh, but uh, I don't know if you ever had this experience, but if you, if, if you did, if you can uh, share a little bit about it. Have you had an experience like interviewing or being part of an interview or a hiring process where you saw like a newcomer's part of those processes and did you notice any mistake that they were committing that they should be avoiding i don't know if you can comment on that uh slightly difficult because you know most of the times uh what i see is uh, the newcomers that apply to the uh, you know to RBC or the positions that I'm talking about, they are generally you know more experienced uh, than uh, they would otherwise be you know compared to the local Canadian candidates. Mm-hmm. So I think uh, a general mistake or not mistake, but you know it's just because of the difference in culture. You know I can speak about you know South Asian, Southeast Asian people, right? Mm-hmm. So. They are more focused on um, technical, the hardcore, you know, knowledge and uh, stuff. Whereas, you know, uh, what I've seen in Canada is that, you know, they are generally more okay in case, you know, your technical skills are acceptable, but they are more focused on the soft skills. So, Uh, you know, if they see the right attitude, uh, if they see the aptitude, you know, you can talk, you can kind of explain your thoughts, even if you lack some knowledge, they, they are okay with that, you know, because you learn, you need to, you need to have something to learn on your next job, right? But if they think, you know, you are not the right cultural fit, that sometimes trumps your experience and everything. So, you know, I have seen a candidate um, that was, that who had exactly the same background as me. Uh, in fact, you know, we worked in the same team when we were in India and I referred him to a role, the same role that I was in at RBC. Uh, so the technical skills were absolutely uh, spot on for the role, but he did not um, get uh, he did not end up hi- uh, getting hired. Uh, and the feedback that I received from the hiring manager was that you know he did not seem to be the right cultural fit, though he had great experience and you know he would have hit the ground running on the first day and everything. So I think you know sometimes newcomers are more focused on displaying their technical skills from their past uh-huh. experience you know i know this and i know that but kind of uh, end up focusing less on you know the softer aspect of skills this is very interesting and because this is our fourth panel and all the panels if i was not asking about soft skills the panelists would bring it up you know like uh how this uh, how this aspect of the candidate is so important as you said sometimes the candidate doesn't have the technical skills like uh okay there are some skills there but uh is missing something uh but we know that you can train the person let's say okay this person doesn't have any experience working this specific software but this is something that two weeks training the person will be fine but when it comes to the attitude, when it comes to working, you know, with your colleagues or peers and things like that, you either have or you don't have, right? So it's something that you can't train and people are not going to be investing time teaching people how to work in teams, right? Like that, that's something that is, uh, uh, you know, it's a, almost a waste of time. Uh, but Carla, if you can, I don't know if you had this experience, like I know that, uh, only for Unitron, you you were working there for 10 years and then you had all, also other roles um, here in Canada. Did you have any experience interviewing maybe um, uh, in a real situation? Because I know that you had experience doing mock interviews with our clients, but if you had like a real interviews with uh, 
you know, in the past with the newcomers. And uh, how how was it? Like, uh, was anything like uh, what was uh, an aspect that you noticed that uh, that is missing when you are a newcomer and you are in an interview? And you can even share maybe even the mock interviews because also give a little bit of sense where people are uh, committing their mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the pool's point is is key. That that cultural fit is. And, and I don't think it's only in Canada, it's something that became, I guess, right? I, I think the uh, things are evolving. So from the interviews we've done, you know, the mock ones with Luther Wood and, uh, you know, real interviews, I think it is a combination of being very concerned with fitting perfectly in the job description so when mm -hmm. you you know you, you have the job posting and they put all people are very concerned with matching what, what's mm -hmm. there and and i i again i i would agree with vipu and, and yourself and the other panelists you, you mentioned in the previous mm -hmm. webinars it is key that you are engaged mm -hmm. so first thing you have to know the company you applied for. You have to, that, that's one thing that is, if you go for an interview and you didn't even check the website, mm -hmm. that is a big thing. You, you have to be able to ask at least one question that is related to the job, right? Mm -hmm. Either connecting yourself to the role where you can prompt them to connect yourself right so depending on the question you ask they will know if you if your question will be so how many weeks vacation i have <laughs> you, might, you might be a little bit uh, right it's not that you cannot ask that but maybe that should be your second question uh -huh. right or, or things like that so i i think you should really be yourself mm -hmm. and, and you have to be someone who is even if the job is just that one that you're gonna get your foot in the door right you, you have to sell yourself uh in a way that you are bringing value to that job and many at, at least I, I think things have changed a little bit in canada in the past years but i would say that in canada they value more your experience than your education background that you know baggage mm -hmm. that we bring is not always negative there, there are two sides to it right so mm -hmm. a couple of things you are a newcomer and you are young you are just starting your career you have zero experience some people might see it as a challenge other people are going to see it as a great opportunity because you can be trained and you can fit in the as, as you said you can train anyone in any skill mm -hmm. the soft skills very different it, it it's not impossible mm -hmm. if the person is open to it uh you you can definitely show them because you know it's a cultural thing you you, mm -hmm. you might come here and you don't know about it right so and people don't know what they don't know mm -hmm. so so i i, I think that to me would be show yourself you know real self be be, be yourself in an interview uh, and be prepared to have at least one question mm -hmm. that relates to the company relates to the role to show them that you did your homework that you are really interested i i have interviewed people that i know they didn't even check the, the website and it's clear it's very clear yeah and that person is not going to be on my short list <laughs> if, you did, if you didn't bother to even check right yeah uh, i i think that's very important and then chime on your experience not specific the skills you bring to the role, but the experience you have had in your past and what you are going to bring to that role. I, I think that's big. So, uh, Carla, uh, uh, different question now, starting with you um, about, uh, 
if if we had a time machine, okay, uh, so people get ready for this question too. What would you? Uh, what would be the advice for you, your uh, yourself back in the day when you arrived in Canada? Uh, what would you tell to yourself that would be, you know, would maybe provide you with a different, you know, experience during this journey that you had? What would you be that thing that you would give? Tell to yourself. Don't do, uh, don't do like that. Do this. Yeah. Avoid that. Yeah. Well, I think the first thing would be do more research for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I I think you know the reason we came was very specific, so we only focused on that. People we know, they recommend the MBA. We were interested in that MBA, and the rest would happen. Uh, don't count on that. You know, prepare yourself. So, in, in my case, I would have done more research for myself. So, we knew we were coming here, my husband would be in an MBA and things, right? And then I should have asked more questions of the university. I should mm -hmm. have learned a little bit more about Halifax uh, employment. Mm -hmm. I should probably have looked for a Luther Wood. One of the reasons <laughs> that I love working with you guys is. I consider myself a success story. Mm -hmm. I think all the experiences, the bad, the good, and the ugly that happened to us in the past years have taught me a lot. And I really mm. want to give back because I didn't have that. I didn't yeah. have anybody to give me that advice. But it's also maybe because I didn't look deep enough. Mm -hmm. right? I should have done a little bit more research. Like I should mm -hmm. have you know, looked for a Luther Wood, as I said. I should have asked more support with the university. That was mm -hmm. our case. I sh Nowadays, we have uh, uh, here in Guelph, we have a, a, a WhatsApp group. Mm -hmm. Probably 50 Brazilian women, <laughs> right? And many of them are talking to others, and we are getting uh, questions about moving to Guelph and moving to Canada from people who are planning to come a year in advance. So they're planning mm -hmm. to come here next April. They are coming, some are coming to the university, the husband or the wife, mm -hmm. but the other spouse is going to do something different, right? So they are asking, they are finding, and I, and I think uh, online uh, WhatsApp groups, it, there is so much more available these days. Mm -hmm. So, you know, try to get that information. And if you are not sure, ask again, you know, and, 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 and try to come as prepared as you can and keep your expectations a little bit you know, <laughs> lower or, or yeah. maybe I shouldn't say that, right? Because we, 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 we want the best. For yes. Families. Yes. But, but I mean, just you know, keep keep that in mind. Yeah. And and then when you get here, is I think it's all about mindset. Your mindset has to be you are coming to a different country. It's not gonna be similar to you lived in England, you lived in Russia, you lived in Brazil. You are coming. The cultural shock is gonna be twice as big than you think. It, it's very, very different. Yeah. I don't think you can prepare 100%. Yes. But, but I would yeah, say that's that true. The, mindset is, the mindset is big. Like yeah. coming here and wanting to have the same lifestyle or, or things like you had in your country or another country you worked with, that's one big mistake I think we make when you come because you want to feel safe, right? You want to be at home and you are not. You are not coming home. That's true. That's right. true. I, I I I had this experience back in the day, like uh, I landed in 2014, but before that I came to Canada uh, visiting, and I even like uh, I had meetings and everything. Like I, I was trying to see if I could establish the same career uh, as I had back in Brazil. Uh, so I I came to Toronto, uh, Quebec, Ottawa, Montreal. Uh, Ville de Quebec, I had meetings with, uh, you know, some similar jobs that I would have, like, uh, that I, that uh, 
that I had in Brazil to see, okay, am I a good fit? Is what I do something that is valuable here or not? So um, I was doing this type of uh, research. And as you said, this is, this is very interesting. You're never 100% prepared, right? But I think it, this is kind of like, uh, like a, when you are opening a company, when you're creating a company, it's the same thing. You have your business plan, you have everything written down, all the research done and everything. But we know that this scenario can change, right? Like, so imagine these people now that were planning to come to Canada. Some of them were already in the process of buying tickets and everything. And then boom, you had COVID, the yeah. pandemic coming in, right? So how you manage this situation, that's that's a very difficult, like a, we are going through very difficult times, very different times. And it's there is nothing that you can share. Okay, what is the the experience in the past with something like this? There is nothing related, to, like a, nothing similar to this, right? So yeah, sometimes so we prepare, but uh, you know the scenario yeah. will change, and there is nothing we can do. Yeah, Before, and I think. Uh, go ahead. Uh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. I, I was just saying, and we, you know, we learn, and you know, and as we get older, we we get reassured that never assume. And I assumed, I assumed that I have an international uh, resume. I'm going to apply. I was not like I, I need, you know, the big job with big salary. No, but I, mm -hmm. I just kind of it can't be that hard. It's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's not. <laughs> so, you know, we, we always say that never assume. And, and I did. So never assume, you know, come here and try to have a plan B. <laughs> That's true. Do your research, this is the plan, but if not, maybe you should try this other plan. So I, I think it's the preparation uh, of the, the whole, you know, it's a big move. It, I, I, you know, people who have not been through that do not realize it is a big deal. It, yes. it is a big move, yeah. Vipo, can you, uh, what would be the advice that you would give to yourself when you landed in Canada that you have done different um, I think I go back to you know my initial story where I told you about uh, you know getting the job that I'm in by a stroke of luck uh, because I had applied to a different job right in Calgary and same mm -hmm. with the TD position so you know and it was all a stroke of luck maybe if that hadn't uh, happened I would have been on a very different career path maybe I wouldn't have been in the same line that you know the same job that i've always been doing and all those kind of things so i think the advice that i would give myself is to network because i think you know in case i had done that which and you know it's not that you know it was not advice to me and it was just that you know I, i'm not a national networker and i thought you know maybe things would work out on their own and luckily it did right but it could have very well turned out the different in a different manner and you know in case i had networked you know instead of a stroke of luck maybe you know i could have told you a story of how i connected with somebody and you know that person connected me to the right person and basically i would have driven the outcome right rather than it being a stroke of luck so i think that's the advice that i would give myself uh if i could go back you know three years and you know had to do the same thing again uh you know just network and just talk to people because and and it works, you know. So networking isn't like you know. So if you talk to somebody today, uh, or if you try to talk to ten people today, you know, maybe only one will respond, or maybe even yeah. uh, not one will respond, but tomorrow somebody will. So you know, it's it it takes time and it takes patience, but you know, definitely you will uh, slowly come across some people who will be helpful, who will be willing to talk to you and who will be willing to refer you to jobs, you know, in case you have suitable skills. And, and then, you know, uh, referrals definitely work much better than, you know, just applying online. That's great. So the two advices would be be more prepared, do your research, don't make assumptions. And the other is build your network, go after people. It's a kind of a sales process, right, Vipo? Like a, you're going to be trying to sell or market yourself to connect. Some people will decline your invitation. Other people will say, oh, yeah, of course, why not, right? So this is something that you have to put yourself out there, expose yourself because the opportunities will not come to you. 
you know, knock at the door, you have to make things happen, right? So, yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So, uh, it's 10.34, so it's been one hour that we are talking here because we, we started a little late, four minutes uh, later uh, or for, for this uh, panel. Uh, and I would like to ask Polly if she has any questions for our guests. Uh, thank you, Carlos. I think both uh, have done a great job of answering questions as we go through. Um, and just lastly, I had a question about networking strategies, and I think Bipo has already provided some uh, insights there about persevering, about how you, you, you have to, to keep on trying, uh, as well as Carlos just sharing her experience in terms of the importance of researching and making sure that uh, you are more prepare and use existing resources that are available to people. So I, I don't think we'll have any additional questions at, at this time. Yeah, so Winnie yeah. has uh, just uh, uh, just sent a question here. Uh, I don't know if you can summarize. I'm reading here. It's a question for right. Carla, actually. Is that correct? Let me see. It's a long question, I think. So she's asking basically, mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to hear or do you want to read the question? All right. Yeah, sorry, it just came in. Let me just uh, see here. Uh, so there's a question here. I think you had touched a little bit on it, on suggestion on how to merge better into the Canadian culture. Very good question. I think it's... Uh, so maybe the networking for sure will give experience uh, with that. So I, I would say two separate things. Professionally, for sure, networking. If you know your area of expertise, even if you are willing to take a step back or work in a different job to start getting your uh, experience here, try to find groups online, especially now because of COVID, lots of things are still online. Uh, or in person and you start attending these meetings. You know, we start your networking, showing up, go and talk to people, observe what they say, how they, you know, approach, and 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 that will start to give you an idea of how people are behaving in professional uh, groups, virtually or not. Uh, in person, even better if they start happening. Day-to-day uh, -day life. I think is just working a lot on your own mindset. Just like I'm, I'm not leaving my culture behind, but I am adapting to this country's culture. And, and then, you know, again, observation goes a long way. Uh, asking people for feedback if you have the opportunity, but it's just, I, I, I guess, a, a I truly believe is the mindset. It's like I'm here to learn how to fit in. But again, you are not changing yourself. You are not changing your culture. You are not betraying mm -hmm. anybody. You are just slowly learning uh, how the culture. And and you know what? There are maybe things that are harder to adapt to than others. So work on one at a time. You know, there is no no rush for that. If you have children. They start going to school. You observe how the mothers connect, invite for a play date. So there, there are many different areas, but but I think approaching it with the right mindset and slowly, one thing at a time goes a long way too. Yeah. Okay. That's so cool. there is uh, there is uh, another question here. This is for Carla, <laughs> and then we wrap up here uh, because we already run out of time. But uh, Winnie has a question here about being a mother while looking for a job. So uh, you had this experience of having a small baby, right? So how you convince during an interview to your employer that uh, you are you're not gonna you know have any problems because you have a child or things like that, and how you balance also like a family and 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 you know, your job? Yeah, again, very good question. Uh, I, I think 
you will find the right employer who does not care about that. Not don't care in the sense of, oh, you have a child. If I hire you, you'll be missing work. And so you, you might stumble, you know, a little bit until you find that employer. Uh, although I think Canada, again, is adapting uh, much better. Life is changing. That, that's the way things are. So first thing you have, if you want to have a full-time job, you have to have a system in place to support you as a mother. You gotta have the daycare. You gotta have, you know, a plan B with, if your husband is also working, can he, does he have a flexible job that can support you with that? So you are responsible for that, unfortunately. So yeah. if you are confident in having your system in place, when you go for interviews, you don't even mention it. Because in Canada, Canada has a very good thing different from Europe, especially. You don't need to disclose whether you have children. You don't have to disclose whether you, what age they are. You can go to an interview and never say you have a child and never mm -hmm. say you are married. And mm -hmm. if they ask you a question about that, you can answer confidently that that will never be a problem. Just be confident in your answer. I have a support system. I have a daycare. I have a, system, I have a family. So it, 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 but you have to be confident in that, right? So then you're going to pass the message. But I, I think Canada is pretty good in, in, in that sense that you can go through many interviews and people never know if we're married, divorced, children, not children. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's very different thing. from Brazil, right? Where they want yeah, your military status on your resume. <laughs> it's the same in Europe. You have to say if you're divorced, how many children, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, but get get your support. Get a system, you know. you Because we are mothers. We all have, you know, some people don't have children, but most of us do. Great. All right. So uh, I'd like to say thank you so much for you too, Carla and Vipol, to be part of this uh, last panel here. Uh, we really appreciate your, you know, stories, uh, the strategies that you share, uh, the frustrations, everything. Uh, it was really important for, you know, uh, the audience here today. Um, and uh, if you have anything to say, Carla, uh, like uh, just to wrap up quickly here. Uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. You, you know, I am a fan of Luther Wood. You guys have a, an amazing support and, and everyone who finds you is very lucky. You guys, you guys are really amazing in what you do. And, and as, as you know, I'm always available if anyone you know needs to chat. But I'm going to go a little bit on the emotional side. And, and I think is one of the things that people don't talk about a lot. And moving to a different country is very courageous. Mm -hmm. And you should all be very proud of that step you took. Canada is an amazing country. I've been angry with Canada a few times when I first moved here, <laughs> right? But it, it is worth it, at least it was for me. I know it's different from different people, but Canada is a great place to raise a family and you just have to be a bit persistent and a bit patient if you are not getting, you know, where you want to be uh, right now or right in the beginning. But, you know, it, if it is what you want, persist. The right job, is there somewhere waiting for you. Great. Vipo, your words. Um, so I think uh, Carla made a very good point. Um, I strongly believe and I have seen this with a lot of, you know, newcomers that I have seen in, uh, you know, coming to RBC or, you know, uh, that I connect with. So persistence is very important. From what I've seen, um, you know, seven to eight out of 10 people who persist with their, you know, job search and, you know, keep their focus on finding something that, you know, makes sense to them or you know, justifies their past experience and all that. It takes some, takes some time, but they do end up finding something that is relevant to them. 
and you know so persistence uh, is very important and then uh, you know you have to adapt uh, to the new country that you are in your you you know basically it's a choice that we made when we came to this country right so you know it's incumbent upon us to adapt to the culture to the environment you know to the requirements there if we are rigid you know um, nobody can help us right so be adaptable be persistent and you know with time things will fall in place great so with uh, these uh uh words of wisdom we are closing our panel today thank you very much for everybody uh for coming for attending this uh panel today and i'll see you next time bye bye thank you thank you bye, bye <laughs>